This table shows a summary of the pituitary hormones, their regulation and effects of what they do. So let's take a closer look at the two that are released from the posterior pituitary gland. And um, remember, they're made in the hypothalamus. So the first one is oxytocin. And oxytocin is stimulated by impulses from the hypothalamic neurons by stretching of the uterine cervix or suckling of the infant at the breast. So um, weak uterine contractions during prolonged labor could result from an insufficient production of oxytocin. This would be an example of where the mom would be induced with the chemical pitocin, which is very similar to oxytocin. And so make sure that you know the target organs and their effects. So the target organs for oxytocin are gonna be the uterus and the breast. The second hormone that's released from the posterior pituitary gland is antidiuretic hormone. And it has to do with concentration of the solute. So it's stimulated by impulses when there is an increased solute concentration, essentially meaning the blood has become more concentration, concentrated with solutes or low blood pressure. And what this is, it tells the hypothalamus is there's a need to put more water back into the blood. So water is reabsorbed in the kidneys. And when there's a lack of ADH, it leads to diabetes insipidus. When there's too much, it is called syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. So now there's a six from the anterior pituitary gland, which directly produces them. And again, make sure that you know um, it's what stimulates it, what initiates it, and the liver, muscle, bone, and cartilage are the target organs. And these are the homeostatic imbalances on the right. So the next slide is showing the rest of the hormones in the anterior pituitary gland. There's thyroid stimulating hormone. So it's stimulated by TRH, which comes from the hypothalamus. Thyroid gland responds and it releases the thyroid hormones. And a lack of that is hypothyroidism called myxedema and hyperthyroidism, that one of them is called Graves' disease. The next one is ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. And its target gland is the adrenal cortex and it promotes the release of various hormones based on the layer and too much of it leads to Cushing's disease. The next two are the gonadotropic hormones because they affect just the gonads and they are stimulated by the same hormone GnRH. So that hormone stimulates the release of both and the target organs are the same for both as well. So the ovaries and testes and FSH, there's really no homeostatic imbalances with each of them, but you should know what they do in each instance for the male and the female. For the um, FSH, this is the one that causes um, oogenesis, so eggs to develop in the ovaries, and also causes spermatogenesis, sperm to develop in the testes. Whereas LH causes ovulation in the ovary, and in the male, it's responsible for testosterone production. So the last of the anterior pituitary hormones is prolactin, and its target tissue is the breast, and it promotes lactation, and these are the homeostatic imbalances associated with it. So our next slide is on the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland in the anterior neck of the trachea. And the most important cells are the follicle cells because they produce thyroglobulin and there is eventually thyroid hormone that is produced there. There's also cells called the parafollicular cells and they produce the hormone calcitonin. Calcitonin affects blood calcium levels and when it is released, um, it affects calcium homeostasis. So the next 
slide is just showing us the structure of the thyroid gland. So we can see those follicle cells, which secrete the thyroid hormone, and then the parafollicular cells secrete calcitonin, which again affects calcium. And that's gonna be important because that hormone opposes the action of parathyroid hormone secreted from the parathyroid glands on the posterior view of the thyroid gland. So we would see it if we were to turn it around. So the thyroid hormone, its major effect is metabolism. It's the major um, metabolic hormone in the body. It's found in two different forms. One is thyroxine, and that's the major form. And triiodothyronine is formed, has two tyrosines and three bound iodine atoms, but it must be converted to T4 at the tissue level. So it travels as T3, but it's converted to T4 at the tissue. So thyroid hormone affects virtually every cell in the body, and it targets and binds to intracellular receptors with nucleus, and it affects genes. So remember, this is the one hormone that even though it is amino acid based, it behaves like a steroid hormone. So it does not use a second messenger system it goes directly through the membranes and affects the genes. So thyroid hormone then affects tissue growth and development. It also maintains blood pressure. So it affects basically everything in the body. Now the way that it's synthesized is first the thyroid gland stores the hormone in the follicle itself until it's triggered by TSH. So TSH you should know is released from the anterior pituitary gland, binds to receptors in the thyroid gland. So the steps now to make this, this thyroid hormone is that the thyroglobulin is synthesized and discharged into the follicle. Iodine is trapped. It's actively taken into the cell, released into the lumen. And this would be one of the reasons why after a radioactive event, for example, if you were around a nuclear meltdown, you're supposed to take iodine supplements so that that iodine is used to make your thyroid hormone, not the iodine that's radioactive. So the, the iodide is now oxidized. It then is attached to the tyrosine. And when this happens, it links together to form T3 and T4 and eventually the hormones then are secreted into the bloodstream. And most, mostly T4 is secreted, but there's also T3. So it's a mix of both T3 and T4. And the T4 is converted at the tissue level. So this slide shows us the exact, kind of the, gra the pictorial view of what we just talked about, the synthesis of the thyroid hormone. So the first step in this image is over here where the thyroglobulin is going to be synthesized and it goes into the follicle lumen. So we see that right here. And then the next thing that happens is it's in the follicle lumen. So the iodide then is transported. So we have two pieces, thyroglobulin iodide when it gets into the lumen of the follicle, the iodide is oxidized to iodine. Iodide is attached, basically, then that forms T3 and T4. Then it goes back towards the blood. Thyroglobulin colloid then is released and T3 and T4 go into the bloodstream. So, for thyroid hormone, it's transport and regulation. The T4 and T3 are transported by thyroxin binding globulin. So they don't just, they're not just by themselves in the blood. They're attached to these proteins. And at the peripheral tissue, there's enzyme to convert the T4 to the T3. The T thyroid hormone then is regulated by negative feedback. So again, it's gonna tell the thyroid, do we need to make more thyroid hormone? So if there's a low amount of thyroid hormone, it sends that feedback signal 
to the thyroid, so more is made, or it could go to the anterior pituitary gland or to the hypothalamus. So we can see in this example, um, those negative feedback systems shown. So if we have a low amount of T3, T4 at the target cell, low thyroid hormones, that could send a signal back to the thyroid gland, to the anterior pituitary, or the hypothalamus. And that would respond by releasing the hormone from those various glands to correct the amount of thyroid hormone that's in the body. So again, via negative feedback.